Alright people, today our topic is bulk edit and update inside of a grid view, right? So it's like the picture is going to be something like this. You are seeing the grid, right? This are all the structure is loaded inside a grid. So like generally, you know, this kind of applications are recommended like, you know, when you got operators and they are doing edit and update in bulk. Like they make the changes right away and when they hit update, all the records are updated in the database directly and that scenario you can use this thing, right? So here's the thing, I have built this thing, now we're going to see how we have built this thing. Like I'll show you the demo, right now you can see PD is PD2, so I can say PD3, this guy is like 77, I can turn down this guy to 88, let's update and it's updated. Now let's have a look inside uh, the database this is what you saw this is going to be 3 this is going to be 7 7 is going to be 8 8 and let's have a look and as you can see this guy gets updated this guy gets updated as well so this is a bulk update right all right so now what we have to do is we have to build a structure right in order to build a structure we need to use a control card as a grid view i mean like there are plenty of options you can use but i'm comfortable with the grid view as for the demo so i'm using the grid view all right so in grid view, <coughs> looking at the structure, you can see like uh, first of all when you're working with the grid view and you have you are using the item templates because in this uh, session we are going to use an item template. In scenarios like that, you have to disable grid uh, grid views auto generate column is equal to false. You need to set that property is equal to false. Otherwise, it will generate something stupid for you which you don't want right so let's check grid view as you can see this property is set to false this property is by default true now once this property is false now i can take a control of a grid view all right <coughs> so let's have a look inside a source view what we have done first thing we are going to look into this uh, we are going to building a structure i mean like after which we are going to bind and update that would be a second portion right so first let's look into this so how can we build this grid view so when you uh, want your customized columns inside a grid view then you have a uh, thing called as ASP template field. This is a very powerful thing inside a grid view uh, by using which you can add as many as control which you desire inside a grid view. Okay, And there are a bunch of templates which resides inside this template field. There can be an item template, there can be an edit item template everybody has a uh, different purpose and the different use generally item template is used for displaying a control like what you have on the screen uh, uh, in that scenario mostly the people use a label control for displaying like uh, if you see over here <coughs> you can see this is a label right so most of them use a label for that kind of situation but over here the situation is different so we are going to use label and text box as well right so looking at this let me get more room so as you can see i have added an item template inside of which i have added just a label just look at the structure just look at the markup don't get uh, confused and all i'll get to the explanation about everything afterwards just look how we have done the markup so this is a label and i got dl id i'm binding the text with some value all right so that value will come into the picture later now next is a text box right which is a name if you look at the markup this is a name right so we need a text box if you need a text box again then you need to say item template inside of which you're going to put the text box and i'm going to name the text box as txt name if you don't remember anything that's fine but remember the id of all the controls lvl id txt name and same copy paste for expert and level only thing the id changes id changes and the binding in the time of bind tag when you use the values which we are binding that changes okay and now the question comes in your mind where these guys come from like uh, so the answer is like uh, the plan is like you know very simple whenever you work with a database it depends uh, like how you want to bind uh, your data to a grid there are different types of techniques but in my case what I do is I get the data from the table I fill the data into a model okay I call this as a model this is a class this class can be a list once I fetch the data from the database I can make the list of this class which can hold all my data and I can simply attach the list to my grid view and the job is done 
so like what you're seeing is id name expert and level everything is right here in you in into the bind thing right you see bind name expert id everything is connected to this guy right so our main task is to fill this guy fill this class because we're going to make a list of this class right because we got so many employees so i hope the markup is clear looking at this you can see this was a label this is a text box and you can see the pink color css uh, i have applied a class called as css class cool if you can see go up here i have attached the color as pink we can if you want you can change it to let's say green all right green yellow whatever and then you hit refresh and things change so you can see the color is very simple this is just to differentiate between the labels and the text box right so i hope you got the idea right so this is basic now once the markup is done let's go into the code behind all right and let's hit f7 now our plan begins plan begin is like uh, when you say i'm going to get the data from the database how are you going to do that first thing is you need a connection to talk to the database hey database i need some stuff from you i need some data from you so database will tell you okay give me the connection string all right so connection string will be one second i'll show you view server explorer if you look at this and if you look at this all right so this is a database and you can see the connection string in here right you can see the connection string in here so you can use this and you can go into your configuration file one second so as you can see i have a web.config file i go into the web.config file instead of connection string i make a new property called as add name i say connection string and then i add my connection string and i provide the provider name that's it once the connection string is ready next thing you need to configure it for the sql connection right so i'm going to say uh, and by the way please uh, remember the name of the database tbl employee and these four properties right don't forget okay so i say sql connection connection is equal to new connection then i'm saying config configuration manager dot connection string i'm telling dot net hey dot net go to the configuration file the web dot config file inside of which you will find a tag called as a connection string inside of which you will find a property called as employee connection string which contains the path to my database right so this is how you get the connection right so now your connection is in hand so everything is easy now what you're going to do is all you're going to do is like there are a bunch of techniques you can uh, talk to database like adapters you have link you to edms link you to sql entity framework you got pl plenty of things this is just a basic so i'm going to use a uh, sql command this is a traditional approach for like you know any beginner if he's watching this video he can carry on so like where command is equal to new sql command then you say command dot command text in command text you specify what query you want to fire and basically what we want to do is we want to get the record from the database right and as i said i'm going to get the data from the tbl employee so here's my care query select star from tbl employee get everything out of this table right so once i have everything out from this table what i'm going to do is now it's time to open a connection and i need to fire a query when i fire a query when i fire a query the execute reader gives me a data in terms of it gives me kind of a data and which is i hold in the variable called as rd which is called as sql data reader now once i have the data in the data reader my next job is to fill my model that is uh this guy i need to fill this guy right so what i'm going to do is before i do that i need to check if rd has rows does my database has any value inside of it i mean in the uh, rd in, inside of here do i have any rows if i have rows it means i have data if i have data then i'll start reading i'll start reading and please remember i have created a collection list a new list of employee i have created a list of this guy okay as we talk okay so once this list is initiated now we can start adding the values in it so and what are we going to add in it the value of reader what we have so employees dot add new employee i'm going to add in id i'm going to add name expert and level please remember these are the value comes from the database like 
this is id name expert and level these are the database value which i'm using over here if you make a spelling mistake i will throw an exception so be careful around here so once after doing this whole you can understand this whole list is filled with all the data which we need then we gracefully close the connection and in the end what we do is we simply attach our data to grid view employee as a data source and in the end bind if we check out the name of our grid view the name is where is the name grid view employee right so once the data is filled and ready let me run this thing all right so now you can see you got everything the complete data i mean you guys can if you guys are following along you can debug and you can look at everything what you need right so now <coughs> so far everything is cool so so far we have covered as like you know we are binding the data with a grid but now what about updation part right for the updation part i'm going to take a next session all right in the meantime if you like the video please give the thumbs up to my videos subscribe to my um, website and my youtube channel and once again thank you for watching this video and please stay tuned for the second part thank you